God bless you. God bless you. And thank you again for tuning in to another edition of The Gospel Truth with Dr. Demetrius Robinson. It is indeed a pleasure to come into your places of business, to come into your homes, to come into wherever you may be listening to us. It is a privilege to come and share the word of God with you um, this afternoon. And we will be continuing our series that we have started and we will be continuing our series on the kingdom of heaven and we will be talking about opening up and that we are able and jesus has given us the keys to the kingdom we will be discussing the keys to the kingdom now the word of god we will take our scripture from Matthew chapter 16 verse 19 and the Word of God says this and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven listen Jesus the king of the kingdom says that he will give unto us and when he's referring to us he's referring to the ecclesia he's referring to those that were bought and those that had revelation knowledge of who he was because he told peter and upon this rock i will build my church that word church there is the word ecclesia and ecclesia means called out ones called out ones those that were called to sit at the master's feet and to learn and to go and legislate the mind of God. So he says, I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom. Now note, Jesus did not say that he would give us the keys to the kingdom. Let's read the word of God correctly. You don't have the keys to it. You have the keys of the kingdom of heaven. He says, and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. What does that mean? And why am I a stickler for the word of God? Because we have to rightly divide the word of God. And, and we have to stop adding stuff to scriptures when it's not there. And we have to stop just making up words in scripture. The Bible says he will give unto us the keys of the kingdom. Now, there is only one way into the kingdom. And the only way into the kingdom is to be born again and enter through the door, which is Jesus, the king himself. This scripture has not really been quoted correctly for ages. When we when you have keys of something, that means that you have access and right to open and to explore anything or any door that that key gives you access to. So Jesus is saying that he's giving us the keys of the kingdom. So he's giving us the ability to open up and to access what he deemed as storehouses. There are storehouses in God's kingdom. And we think that those storehouses were talking about living abodes. And it was not talking about living abodes. It was actually referring to the blessings that are stored up in heaven. And you need to have a key to unlock these storehouses. Because Jesus said, in my father's house. Now, where is the father's house? The Father lives in heaven. Jesus said, when you pray, you say, our Father who art in heaven. God lives in heaven. And Jesus said, in my Father's house are many mansions. Now, this word mansion is the Greek word storehouses. It's almost as if the word gives the connotation of it being... um. Places that you will, the, you know, the warehouses that Amazon are building all over the place. Just think about millions of Amazon storehouses in heaven and God has given you keys or access to everything that is in heaven. And so God says, I'm giving you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. 
and you can go in and out. You can explore everything that heaven has to offer. Why? Because Christ died, and when he died, he rose up with keys, and he gave those keys to the ecclesia, the called out ones, those that will take the time to sit at the feet of Jesus and learn access and learn how these keys work. Now, the word keys here in our scripture text is the word kleis, kleis, K-L-E-I-S, kleis. And it, it carries the meaning that the person who has possession of these keys would have power and authority of various kinds. Let me say that again. The person that has that is carrying these keys would have power and authority of various kinds. So the Bible says that I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom. So what God was saying is once I give you these keys, baby, you're going to have some power and some authority. Why? Because the power is in the key. But the authority is, is, is in the one who gave you the keys. Now, you can have some keys. Listen, there are some pickpocks that will steal your keys, but that don't mean they have authority to come into your house. God says, I'm giving you power and authority in the heavenly realms that you can lock and unlock things in heaven just by having these keys. I'm trying to get you to understand, baby, you packing. You got something that God has already given you. You have access to everything you need. You don't even have to pray about it. You don't even have to bombard heaven about it. Baby, you already have it. All you got to do is learn how to use the keys and access the storehouses that are in heaven. I'm coming to let you understand that there is a storehouse of healing that's in heaven. And baby, you got a key to that storehouse. There is a storehouse of blessings that are in heaven. And Christ has given you the key to that storehouse. There are storehouses of prosperity. And there are storehouses of favor. There are storehouses of grace. And you have the keys of the kingdom. And all you have to do is explore the kingdom and open the doors and open up doors in your life. I'm coming to let you understand that you are living in an open heaven. You have the ability to open up some doors in heaven. You have some ability to open up some storehouses and to loose some things in your life. Because the Bible says... If you give your tithes, he will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. There's keys involved. And this is why you have to understand the kingdom message. The kingdom message is giving you understanding that you live in a kingdom and you living in this kingdom gives you access to everything that's in the kingdom. Everything that God has, you have access to it. Why? Because you are a child of God and God has given you some keys. Yeah, if you're listening to me under the sound of my voice, all I want you to do is to just say this. Say, I got some keys. Yeah, I, I want you to just type in the chat. I got some keys. I have the ability. The Bible says you have the power and the authority to open up some storehouses in heaven, but no one has taught us that we have storehouses. That's why we don't utilize the keys. We're praying for something that God has already given us. And I come to tell you, God will never do what he's already done. He's already given you everything you need to be successful in this life, but you got to search the scriptures and you have to be a workman that needs not to be ashamed and you got to rightly divide the word of truth. You got to understand that you have keys, but listen, I have a set of keys right here. And if I give you these keys, 
you won't know what these keys mean. He says, I give you the keys to the kingdom, but if you don't know which key opens up which door, you will be experimenting with the keys for the rest of your life. And I'm coming to tell you that in the body of Christ, we have been experimenting with the keys because we don't know what key opens up what door. He says, I give you the keys. But in the word of God, the Bible says that I will give you the knowledge or the secrets of the keys of the kingdom. You got to have wisdom to have knowledge. If I give my engineer the keys right now, there's car keys, there's house keys, there's keys to storehouses, there's keys to lock boxes, there's keys, but he don't know where my bank at. He don't know where my lock box is. He don't know where my house is. So these keys don't mean nothing to him because he don't know how to access the things that these keys offer. And I'm coming to tell you, we got some keys, but the problem is we have not been taught how to use the keys of the kingdom. Yeah, there's some stuff you got to be taught. You got to be taught how to use the keys of the kingdom so that you don't walk around all day experimenting, just walking up and down the street on Capitol Drive, just checking everybody's car because you don't know what key this car goes to. You have to understand that God has given you some keys. Call me 414-578-1560. I just want you to just say, Dr. Robinson, I got some keys and I'm about to unlock some doors. God has given you the ability to unlock some doors in your life. There's nothing that the enemy can lock up that you can't unlock. And then there's some stuff that you can lock up on the devil that he can never open. Why? Because God didn't give him the keys. Matter of fact, God took his keys and he gave them to you. Yeah, if you're listening to me on YouTube, if you're listening to me there on Facebook, just type in, I got some keys. I got some keys. Yeah, you got some keys. The problem is for the king, for the citizens of the kingdom of God is what good are keys that you can't use because you can't decipher what locks open what door. And here's the problem with Christianity today. We got a bunch of keys that God has given us, but no one has taught us how to use the keys. No one has taught us which key opens up which door. I'm trying to give you enough. Let's give you just an understanding of the keys. There is a key called praise. Praise is a key. It is a key of the kingdom. The Bible says, Thou inhabitest the praises of Israel. The Bible says that when you begin to praise, God says he will hear your praise. He will look at your praise and your praise ignites heaven and God will get off his throne and begin to come and live inside of your praise. I'm trying to get you to understand that anytime you're going through some tough times in life, stop complaining and begin to use the key of praise. Turn the praise on the devil. Sometimes you got to put a praise on it. And when you put a praise on it, the Bible says God comes down and he inhabits. The word inhabits means that he will live inside your praise. You got keys. <laughs> Anytime the devil is hounding you. Just begin to pull out the key of praise and put it in the lock and begin to praise God. I'm trying to get you to understand that when you praise God, the Bible says he inhabits. But that Hebrew word means that he comes and he sits in your situation like a judge 
to render a verdict. I'm trying to tell you the devil has been doing some stuff in Milwaukee and doing some stuff in your neighborhoods and in your cities. And if you would just turn the key of praise, God will come down and sit in your situation and render a righteous judgment. I'm trying to tell you that when the judge renders a verdict, the verdict is final. I don't care if you don't like the verdict. When the judge says you're going to pay, baby, you going to pay. Whether you like it or not, whether you don't feel like it's a right judgment, I'm trying to tell you we need God to render some judgments in our life. We need God to render some judgments in our favor. God is waiting to judge the enemies of your soul. If you will begin to praise, I'm giving you a key to the kingdom. One of the keys is called the key of praise. And the key of praise will unlock heaven. It will motivate God to come and sit into your situation and render a verdict on your behalf. How many of you need God to just render a verdict? How many of you need God to just lay the gavel down and say, I render a verdict in Robert's favor. I render a verdict that everything that he has, it shall come to pass. I render a verdict that everything the devil has stolen, he must repay back to you double fold. That's the verdicts that we need God to come and to render in our lives, but he only renders verdicts when you begin to lift your hands and when you begin to praise. Yeah, the Bible says God inhabits praise. He don't inhabit complaints. God don't inhabit crying and murmuring. God inhabits praise. Yeah, you got some keys. You got to begin to learn how to use these keys. One key is the key of praise that when you unlock praise, you unlock God for movement in your life. And when you open the door, you open the door to the judge to come and render a verdict on your behalf. God is waiting to render some verdicts on your behalf. God is waiting to lay the law down on the devil and to render some verdicts. And listen, when you render verdicts, there are, are people that are in court called bailiffs. Yeah, they're the sheriffs that if you, you can clown if you want to, the sheriffs are right there to take you to a place that you really don't want to be. And I'm trying to tell you that when God renders verdicts, he loose the bailiffs of heaven and they are the angels and when the angels come they make sure that the judgment that God has rendered that it comes to pass the devil can act a fool if he want to but Michael and all the angels are waiting to enforce the judgments of God yeah you need God to render a righteous verdict on your behalf but he can't render the verdict until you use the key of praise. Yeah, just lift your hands. Let me show you how this key works. Anytime something's going on in your life, all you got to do is just steal away and begin to worship and begin to praise. Just begin to thank God. Father, I worship you. And I praise you. Lord, I thank you for what you're doing in my life. Father, I give you glory. I give you honor for everything that you're doing in my life. And Father, you see the situations that I'm going through. You see the enemies that are rising up against my soul. And you said that you will come and avenge me and avenge me speedily. So Father, I choose to worship. I don't choose to complain. I don't choose to snap my neck. I don't choose to retaliate, but I choose to praise. And when you praise, 
He comes down and inhabits your praise. Let me tell you how this worked. Paul and Silas had got whipped, and I'm talking about whipped. They had whipped them, and they beat them, and they threw them under the jail, and they had whipped them until their backs looked like a plow field. They whipped them until their face was unrecognizable, and Paul looked over at Silas, and Silas looked over at Paul and said, this is a good time to praise. And they begin to praise in the jail. And the Bible says there was an earthquake. But the problem was it wasn't an earthquake to get them out. It was the earthquake of God stepping into a situation. And he was joining into the praise of Paul and Silas. And anytime God steps in a situation, he's so big that whatever's holding you cannot hold you any longer because he has power to bust open any jail, to bust open any prison. Why? Because somebody decided to pray. Praise is a weapon. It is a key that when you unlock the key, God comes down. And when God gets in your situation, <laughs> I'm like the old folks. He's so big, you can't get around him. The old folks used to say he's so high, you can't get over him. He's so low, you can't get under him. When God steps into a situation and he renders a judgment, it is so. That's what amen means. It means so be it, as I have said. And I'm coming to tell you that when you use the key of praise, God renders verdicts on your behalf. I thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Gospel Truth. We're just going to walk through some keys as we continue these sessions. I'm going to tell you how to unlock some things in your life. I'm going to show you how to bring the kingdom of heaven down into your life so that you can live the life that Christ promised you. And that life is that you will live life more abundantly. That's God's best for you. God's best for you is to live life and have no sorrow behind it. That's what Christ died for. He died for overflow. Christ died so that your cup could run over. You should be dripping. Yeah. They coined a phrase in the world, I'm dripping. Yeah, you should be dripping. Why? Because you're dripping with the power and ability of God. Yeah, but when you use this drip, you don't have to lean. Ha <laughs> ha. You don't have to lean with it, but God is the rock. You can rock with it because he's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. May God bless you. May he forever keep you. May he forever make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto thee. May God lift up his countenance and give thee peace. Until next week, this is Dr. Robinson from the Gospel Truth. God bless you. I love you. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day.